All right, guys, we'll get right to the content, but I just want to say thank you for supporting this channel. Supporting this channel allows me to keep making content, so thank you. If you haven't already, please click below and subscribe. That really helps me out a lot. Without further ado, enjoy the video. All right, guys, there's one thing in the swing of, a, of the C-swing that I mentioned in other videos other people have mentioned, uh, but they really haven't talked about how you can use the momentum of the dropping action of the rack ahead to get spin on the ball. So what I mean by that is we all know to come out, come around the ball, and then go forward, right? Well, the more you drop, the more the rack ahead's gonna drop, right? I mean, that's just momentum. But the idea then is if you can bring that rack ahead down and then you use that momentum to snap back up over the ball, you're gonna get a lot of pace on the ball. So the idea then is when I'm swinging, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to feel that drop and then let that rack ahead drop. And then once it's to the bottom, I can use that momentum now to swing back up at the ball. So it's a got it's not a jerking motion, but it's you gotta feel that momentum hit the bottom of your tension of the tension of your wrist to go back up at the ball. So what I mean by that is I do my C swing, I drop, and then I can go up over that ball. Ball had a ton of spin on it because I'm dropping and now I, I'm going up and the rack ahead is still kind of going down because of my moment, because I'm relaxing so much. Now that racket's gonna have a lot more um, whipping sensation over the ball. So just kind of know the reason why you're dropping is to create some momentum back up to the ball, kind of like a whip, right? If I wanna whip something forward, I go back first, then forward, right? Well, if I wanna go up to create top spin, I gotta go down first, don't I? So the idea is I'm going down and then up, and that rack ahead was allowing it to go down. So I'm gonna show that in a different angle, maybe that will help too. So just like I was just, I was just talking about, uh, I want to show it with a different angle now, where I'm dropping and then as I'm going up, the rack head is still weighing down because I'm relaxed so much that it's gonna create a whipping sensation over the ball, right? So I'm dropping and then I go up to the ball. That ball bounced into the court and bounced over the beam of the fence, the middle beam, that means I'm hitting the ball, I'm six foot four, I'm hitting the ball shoulder height when it bounces back in the back fence. So it's probably over by my head by before it bounces to the fence. That's really good spin, right? So the idea is you gotta feel that momentum of dropping and then going up. Now if I shank it like that, that's where I'm gonna jerk the ball too much. So I gotta calm down when I'm doing this where I'm feeling it stay down and going through in a much more smooth manner. I think you saw that. We're gonna slow motion another one. All right, let's see a few in slow motion so you can see what I'm talking about with this, uh, so the not jerking sensation, but using the momentum of the whipping. I like to call it the whipping sensation instead. So that second one bounced over that half beam again with a lot of spin. So you know you can you can judge how well you're hitting with spin by how high it bounces. But try that out where you're dropping, feeling that drop to go back up and create that monster spin you can get without jerking and using the momentum of your wrist and tension of your wrist. Instead, you're bringing the whipping sensation of your racket. So that might help you get a little bit more pace on the ball. But like I said, it won't be if it's if it feels jerky that means you're not you're not using the momentum correctly you're timing it wrong a little bit which is common so just try to do this a little bit um, on the ball machine practice it and you might feel it a little bit better so hopefully that helps good luck